are back again. I'm surrounded by Bibles everywhere, and that's the way it should be. We're surrounded. And um, we just rejoice in the Lord with you and the coming of our Lord. I, I don't have any video, basically, uh, especially now. We're getting really close to the, to the rapture right now because of the um, fulfillment of prophecy that some of you have been, may have been following pertaining to the, the red heifers and the, the temple and so forth and the Arabs and, and Jews making some sort of agreement and so forth. Um, and of course, uh, and now that I mentioned that, uh, I, first of all, I, I, I mention the rapture all the time because that is our chief joy. Our chief joy is not being a Republican and saving America or a Democrat who wants to uh, be, be weirdo. Uh, our, our chief joy here is to get out of here and be with the master who we love and also be with some relatives who are saved too. That's another big part of Christianity is, is, is your, your relatives who love Jesus Christ, they're, they're, they didn't disappear. They're waiting for you to be with you and it's going to be quite an emotional reunion. But let's move on from the, from the rapture and get back to the apostasy and let me share with you what it is, as I greet you in the only name given, as we get into lifting up hearts and hands and voices and blessing Father constantly, we will bless the Lord. And all that is within us, we will bless his holy name. And that is God saves. And God loves to save. And he loves to save sinners like me. And he does it by people listening to his son. That's why the Father said, hear ye him. We spend most of our time here, half of our time, in the red letters. That's the son we listen to. Now let's get going as we continue to enjoy our red letter edition. We talked about the basics of the apostasy or falling away. Um, this is, this is uh, Falling Away 2022, which is a short a series of videos where I'm not going to get into it in depth this year. I already have my year planned. I did not plan on giving a lesson on the apostasy this year. But there's so much apostasy going on. It's everywhere, especially in America, that we had to sneak another lesson in. Okay? So let's, let's get into this because we're, uh, we're, 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 we're getting away from what I want to get into right away, which is I wanted to talk about the momentary apostasy, which means that some people fall away, but they don't fall away, fall away. They just kind of fall away, and they come right back to the narrow path. The master calls it the, the narrow path. And the narrow path is where you've got all your ducks lined up in a row, where you have everything in a basic, proper posture pertaining to your understanding of the Bible, and you're not contradicting something that is extremely serious, such as what I just mentioned in the previous, where people knocking on my door saying that Jesus Christ is not Almighty God, or the Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. That is evil personified. But here's my point. We're talking about people, first of all, in the first part of this, we're going to call this like momentary insanity. In other words, Sometimes you, you, your thinking can be wrong, but it doesn't have to stay wrong, right? Uh, uh, when Peter told Jesus, our lovable master said that he had to suffer many things. And Peter's telling him what? Let that be far away from you. In other words, what, we, what I want, my vision of following you as a Christian is advancement, and pleasure and privilege. That's my perspective of where this church is going as we wander around and preach the gospel of salvation to the Israelites. That's my perspective. And what happened was he was called the devil. And the reason why he was called the devil was because he went into a deep apostasy. He went into a mindset which was contrary to the essence of and the basics of Christianity. That's why he was called a devil. If somebody comes over to your house and you're a Protestant Christian, 
and they tell you that life should be beautiful and, 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 that, and that you should be advanced financially and that godliness is gain and that you're going to be healed all the time, every time, and, and give you all of these ideas, then that's called an apostasy. Because that's what Peter told the Master, let all of this suffering be far from you, denial. Lay down your life for Jeremiah, that worthless human being. Uh, you, you Don't lay down your life for that worthless human being. And the master told him that he was the devil. And, and this is very significant because even though it was temporary insanity and a momentary apostasy, it was confronted with what? A rebuke. Okay, that was a stern rebuke, which means stop it. Then there's somewhat of a reproach. Well, what are you doing, dude? Then there was reproof. Well, let me correct you. And that's how we generally correct people. We tell them to stop, or we tell them first, what are you doing? Then we tell them, or we share with them, oh, hey, bro, what, what's going on here? Then we tell them how we can fix the problem. That's called reproach and reproof. And you add rebuke and you have three concepts. By the way, when you go to 26 on my playlist, that's lesson 26. I have everything enumerated here for you. How to correct people. Jesus was correcting our lovable master, who we love dearly. He was correcting Peter, and his name was Simon, I think. His name was Simon at the time, but he changed his name to Peter the Rock. His name means to listen. He changed listener to rock. Now, here's what's significant about this. It was momentary insanity. And Peter's going to come out of this beautifully. In other words, he, he, it's going to be beautiful to see him emerge from an everyday Gentile who, who prioritizes his life and his world to a person who's willing to be crucified upside down. And, and, that, and that's a big change in a person. That's called a character transfer. And a beautiful person is going to emerge from this selfish Hebrew boy who doesn't understand what the gospel is. He doesn't understand what Christianity is. He's just learning, and he, he went off on a tangent uh, trying to embrace party and enjoyment of the world through the power that the master had. In other words, the master has power, so let us use it so we can enjoy ourselves. That's when the master called him an apostasy man. He's falling away, and he's fallen hard. He's fallen so far that he's now being called a poser. That's what Satan means. He's opposing progress. He's opposing the master who, who has to concentrate on enduring the cross for a worthless piece of garbage like me. He has to focus on it. You can't have anybody get in the way of what you're going to do, especially someone who opposes the progress that you have in, in motion. Okay? Because the devil likes to get into the mix, and all of a sudden, like they used to say here in America, the devil is in the details. In other words, there's something here that's going to, that's going to mess up the whole engine. That's the point. And, and what's messing up the engine in this momentary apostasy is, is that we're listening to Peter, and we're hoping that he responds properly and does not respond in a way that is going to, that's going to cause problems with the master. In other words... He's, the master is going to tell him what to do, and he's going to get out of his hole. That's my point. And that's the first point I want to make with the momentary apostasy here, which is 
we're hoping that a lot of people are in momentary insanity. The word insanity doesn't necessarily mean you're crazy. Some people think the word insanity means you're absolutely crazy. That's not what the word necessarily means. It means unsound. It means you're going the wrong way. You can have your wits about you and drive the wrong and arrive and drive in the wrong direction. You can dance off a cliff. There's a famous story in Aesop's Fables or something, I forgot, where, where the people danced all the way and they just were so happy they danced off a cliff. They weren't insane, they were just unsound. Okay? And Peter has gone unsound here. He and uh, uh, it's not good. And what he's introducing here is he wants to introduce dead bread. That's what he's doing. He wants to introduce vitamins or things to take into your, into your spirit that are going to cause problems for your health. If you continue to think that you're, that you're supposed to enjoy the world and, and not take up a cross, then you're going to find yourself in a bad position. You're going to find yourself without any vitamins. And you're going to perish. Because vitamins, according to the Bible, are the, the living bread and the commandments of Jesus Christ, which are for you to lay down your life for the brethren and to speak those scriptures and to put that in, on your heart. Because uh, Paul and John both say that that is what the love of Jesus is, laying down your life for the brethren. And Peter is going in the other direction. A lot of people don't li listen to their Bible. They have a tendency to just treat it like Kool-Aid, and that's not good. And they have Kool-Aid Bible teachers on TV who give you Kool-Aid, and they're not giving you the real deal. And I'm here, to, I'm here to give a couple of videos here on, first of all, what a momentary, um, in psychology they call it a quantal sway. So he, he, all of a sudden, he's just losing it. And, and we're looking forward to him coming out of the tunnel of darkness. That's what he's doing. And, and, and they're all out in the wild. And when you're out in the wild, you're going to have to make, big, you have to make the right decision. Because all humans are in the wild. We're all in the wilderness. Now, the hope is that everyone who is stuck on this apostasy uh, will, will soon reject all of these lies from the opposition. And, and uh, you know, you have fake health food. It's supposed to be health food, but it's not. There's no vitamins in it. One thing I learned when I went to college, uh, I, I had a wonderful... Um, uh, professor who, who, who gave us uh, some health lessons, essentially. That's part of the university. That's part of the requirements to take a health class. Now, now we don't need health classes, Christians, because the power of God sanctifies and preserves us. We get instant vitamins from the Holy Spirit. Uh, you could probably eat, go without eating for a thousand years in a human body. If the Lord wants you to live, that's my point. But I, but I don't mind learning about health. Well, it's not going to hurt me. They made us take the class. It was mandatory core requirement. Now what's happening is the apostasy is a bunch of people who are sitting around talking, and what they're doing is they're cultivating dead bread. They're cultivating the same thing that Peter did, which was that, 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 that the world is a pleasure unit for you. And it's the same thing that the devil told Jesus in the wilderness. Peter is telling the master the same thing that the devil told him in the wilderness, that enjoying yourself because God has commanded you to enjoy food, so why don't you just enjoy food and, and everything and just forget about Jeremiah, that worthless piece of garbage in California. Is he really worth it for you? Why don't you just enjoy things with me? And he told him, man shall not live by the command to eat food and enjoy food. 
In other words, if, if that's the only command of God that you're going to obey, you're going to die. That's the point. He's even telling the devil that he's going to die. Now, he's not going to die physically because you, a spirit can't die. When the master talks about death, he refers to your conditions. Your conditions are your death. A soul can't die. There's four ounces in you that, that lives forever. God breathed into man and into your mother a living soul, probably four ounces. What's the point? The point is death is conditions, not a state. And the master is telling the devil in the, in the wilderness, and he's telling him that you and everybody else who agrees with you, you're going to die because you're not listening to the commandments of God. That big old scripture to... Uh, uh, to Joshua, have I not commanded you, Joshua? And we've been commanded here for a fourth grader who's paying attention to eat living bread, which is to eat, I will take up my cross and speak it. Most of the people I run into out here in America, they don't speak commandments, which means a lot of them have fallen away and we're hoping that they are in a temporary state of mind. And they're going to get snatched out of their hole of the falling away. And that hole is a table that has no living bread on the table. We're Gentiles. We're having a wonderful time. Didn't God bless us with dinner? And we're not putting that down. It's just that if, what, what, what Jesus is saying is, if that's all you've got on your mind, you're toast. We have a loser on our hands. Why? Because you had an opportunity to eat living bread. If you have an opportunity to serve Jesus Christ in humility and you don't do it, ouch, look out. And we're talking about Peter right now, who is falling into a hole here psychologically, and the master confronts him, and he responds very well, doesn't he? Because only a few uh, uh, moments later, the master calls him the cornerstone of the church. So a lot of people out there who are falling away, who, uh, who, are, who have been sucked into being, uh, wanting to be greedy and to be lazy and gold bricks and not get into work and go overseas and, and be hurt badly trying to help a, a, a Muslim woman to become a Christian and so forth, well, you know, they might change their mind like Peter did. He changed his mind right away. The Lord told him he was deadly wrong. And what did he do? Snap, crackle, pop. He got himself out of the hole by accepting the fact that he cannot talk as though he's on television in America uh, giving out cotton candy. That that person will surely die. If you have an opportunity to eat servitude and become an Israelite, which means to be fully submitted to Jesus Christ, and you reject that proper submission, ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. As the master told Chorazin and Bethesda, woe to you. Because you heard the gospel, and then some people got healed and had faith in God, and they're in trouble too. Faith doesn't necessarily save you. Here's another big point. The master said, where are the other nine? Ten people had confidence in God's power. Ten. They were healed. Only one came back. And the master said, where are the other nine? Why did he say, where are the other nine? Because faith and getting healed without love for the master is dead. I don't want to just be healed by God. I want to please Father, don't you? You want everything to be a one-way street? Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. You don't want to, you don't want to uh, uh, share and give something, huh? Well, that doesn't sound very intelligent at all, does it? So the lies of Satan, which are spoken, is fake. It's fake health food. And that's what it is. Many have erred, many have gone the wrong way, uh, many have shrunk, and, uh, and, and, uh, and then Paul says that, that, that they might what? That they, they might get themselves together. To Timothy, 
Okay, we hope they get themselves together, and that's your job, Timothy, is not to go along with these people who are talking like the devil, opposing uh, humili humility and long-suffering, as though it's not a part of the church. No, be that far from you, long-suffering Jeremiah. You don't need to take up a cross. No, Jesus only said six times take up a cross, only six times, that's all. How can you miss six times unless you're playing games? That's what we used to say back in the day, come down, clown, because you need to come down off of your pedestal of stupidity. If you think you're going to get away with coming on, knocking on the door, or playing games around here, such as, uh, Jesus said, take up your cross six times, I don't want to do it. He, he told you six times that you told me you don't want to do it. Then you told me you want to hang around and tell me how, you're, how blessed you are. I'm going to tell you, you ain't blessed. You ain't blessed, blessed if you ain't taking up no cross. You're not worthy of Jesus Christ uh, if you don't take up his, uh, the same cross he took up. Meaning you are not going to be, uh, he, he, ain't, he ain't thinking about you. I had a friend who used to say, I ain't studying you. Who wants to think about you and you really don't love the people that you're hanging around? You're just hanging around. You want to use people or something. Or, you know, you want to hurt people's feelings or something. Uh, we don't need you. you. You will be discarded. You're not worthy of people who care for people if you don't care about people. That's all the Master is saying there in Matthew. Anyone who doesn't want to dig in here and fight, I don't think you're worthy of hanging around us. We have real men and women here who are real men. Why do we need people around here who are Milk toast. I'm putting American boots on the ground this lesson. I'm from America. I may as well use American uh, Americanisms or whatever you want to call it. Why not? Even Russia is talking like America now. Everybody's starting to talk like uh, Americans because Americans are the leaders of the world on many fronts. And the reason why we are because of William Penn, the Pilgrims, you want to keep going? That's why we're the leaders of the world. Now, we're not leading that much anymore, but that's not my point. <laughs> my point is, is that I want to talk about momentary insanity, and we're, and we're using Peter as one example. Uh, he, he lost it. Because he wasn't listening to the master saying, I have to go suffer and take up a cross, and so are you. You've got to drink the same cup I have to drink. And a cup is not a sip. That's another point. Is a cup a sip, or is a cup quite a few drinks? Now, I know many, many of you know uh, a basic physics, and that a cup is not a sip. A cup is one sip, and another sip, and a big gulp. That's what it is. And I've had third graders who could probably do much better than what I'm seeing from a lot of adults pertaining to their encounter with this Bible. Okay? Now, it's, uh, it's Jeremiah's Lamentations, but, it, but it's, uh, it, it, we're going to move on, aren't we? That's why we're focusing on beauty this year, because it's time for us to let those, as John said in Revelation 22, who want to be mean and, and, and be greedy and whatever, let them go. We're going to talk about where we're going and how beautiful it's going to be. And how fantastic it's going to be. So that's what we're spending a lot of time on this year because we've had enough growling into the mud. It's time to start uh, taking a, an eagle's flight and soaring through the air and going to the stars here in the rapture. I decided to take this time out to, to, to go over the apostasy just a little bit because I will not go over it till next year again. Because the, the, the apostasy is the same thing as sin. It's sin for you. It's error. It's hamartia in the Greek. It's sin for you to want to look out after yourself and to not put down the, the gauntlet for sacrifice and denial for other people. That's essentially what this is all about. That's kind of like the core of all of this.
Now, now the situation is bleak right now. There are numbers, there are myriads of people who have fallen into the same pit that Peter did, and they have not gotten out of the pit. They have not left their their field of error psychologically, and and the end of it is going to be ugly. Now, obviously, we here as sound doctrine Bible students, we are op optimistic that these people who are false apostles and false brethren and all of this uh, greedy false stuff, that they're going to get out of the hole and they're going to start listening and speaking the commands of Jesus Christ, which they're free to do. It's the, it's the royal law of liberty. You're free to put this on. You're free to put Christ on. Now, we're, we're obviously ha ha talking about beauty this year, and, and we think it's beautiful to, to watch Peter come out of his hole. He emerged out of the hole, and the master helped him get out of the hole. And the hole was he was falling into the idea of a lot of what you see on TV right now in America and so forth, where, 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 where this, the, everything is about your pleasure and even in the church. And the power of God is for you to enjoy the world and forget about our lovable Jesus Christ telling you to take up your cross six times. Just extract it out of the Bible, and that's what's happening here. That's what the apostasy is. It's adding words, subtracting words, hiding words, and twisting words. That's what it is. And what people are doing, we just looked at uh, Psalm 50, they're taking the covenant or the agreement to be a Christian in their mouth, but they're hiding and playing games. In other words, they're just speaking subjection and professed subjection, but they have not subjected themselves because they haven't taken up their cross. Now, some people start to take their cross up and then they toss it off. That's why the master said to take up the cross and what, what's the second step? To bear, B-E-A-R. What does that mean, Dr. Jeremiah? It means to hold on to a servant mind and don't become offended at what the God, what God has for you as a sacrifice for him. A sweet smelling savor. You're, you're gonna, you're gonna enter, enter into some difficulties and you're gonna bind up a broken heart by you not going to the baseball game, but going over sister so-and-so's house. You're gonna bind up a broken heart and you're gonna be a successful Christian. That's all this is. Can you figure that out? You don't need a calculator or Einstein mathematics. Einstein was very good probably with mathematics, but he, he didn't invent anything. He, he, uh, they said he invented, th I, think he, I think he invented a refrigerator parts or something, and he didn't, he didn't even do that by himself. But let's let that go. So here we go with lies of the devil. And, and Peter is, is an example of hope for us, that people who are going south can turn it around. That's the point. Greed, pleasure, pride. That, that movie I had, uh, Indiana Jones, where he, he, the Professor Jones is going to go out in the world for fortune and glory. When you come to the church, that all must die. It doesn't mean there's not a process because we can see the Lord being patient and going through the process with Peter. Peter didn't have to be perfect when he first became a Christian uh, because he just dropped the ball because the Lord called him Satan. He dropped the ball. He wanted to join the false church. That's what he wanted to do at that time. Momentary insanity, when you start thinking and talking and agreeing with for, uh, for any duration of time to start eating and intake the ideas and the concepts that are part of the apostasy, which is dead food and no vitamins for the soul. That's it. And the future of that soul is condemnation. 
This is not very complicated. I'm going to go through this like butter, and we're going to go right back to uh, 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 Solomon. We're going, to, we're going to find some beauty in Solomon, and we're going to uh, we'll probably uh, 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 probably just since I'm in Proverbs, we're going to change the subject for a moment. We'll get back to the apostles, in, but we'll probably look at um, and talk about one of my favorite scriptures, which is Proverbs 21. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he, he, he turneth it, whether so he will. The goal as a Christian is to put your heart in the hands of the Lord. So he can turn you any way he wants to turn you. That's one of the most beautiful scriptures in the Bible, in my opinion. Jesus said, give to God the things that belong to him. Don't give him money. Give him your heart. God doesn't need your money. Adam and Eve didn't have money. Moses didn't need any money. If he needed water, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't need to buy bottled water. He just struck a rock, and water just gushed out of the rock. I had someone who belongs to a church here, uh, some church, and they, and they told me that they, that, that they needed to do this to get money or, 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 or they, had to, they had to please God in order for them to get something from God, earn something, you know, like they have in the, the Catholic uh, synagogue where you have absolution and, 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 you, and, and you pay penance, so you pay for stuff. You gave this, you paid that. That's from downstairs because Jesus paid it all. What you do to, to bring to God, as far as you getting something from God, is filthy rags. That's all you can bring him. You can't bring anything to God. God, I did this. It's, it, no, matter how many, no matter how many things you did right, it's still tainted and it's filthy rags. That's just the way it is. There's another way to apostatize by declaring that you could pay for something. I bought candles for the church. I, I have a movie where the Catholic people say that they're going to buy candles for the church and God's going to give them a husband. They have a place around the corner here that says if you knock on so many doors, that's how you get saved. That's called apostasy. That's called heretical. It's a lie. It's not the truth. When you go to God, it's called the throne of grace. God knows who you are. He's know, he, knows, he knows what you've done. And he knows you're not going to be perfect. And so you better just go up there and say, forgive me. And I want to come up here by your grace. That's the only way I want to approach you. I don't want to approach you based upon my performance ever. Ever. 